welcome back to Controls Hero. This is my CCT tutorial on Pump Alarm Part 2. And in this tutorial we are connecting our previously created Pump Alarm to our logic. Plus, one of the main reasons I'm creating this second part is for you to learn how to fix a typical error when making conflicting connections. That is, a circular dependency has been detected. And we will fix this issue by using a simple CCT module called last value. Okay, so I want to start by reviewing our pump alarm. So I'm just going to right click view logic. And this is how it works. Basically, when we have a pump start command and we don't have a status within certain amount of time, then we're going to get an alarm. And the alarm is going to latch, meaning that it's going to stay there in alarm even if we get a pump status. And the only way to get out of the alarm is by resetting the alarm. And for my previous tutorial, you can see that I only created Boolean inputs and outputs. You can see right here, false true, false true. And the reason for this was just to make it simpler. But now we're going to have to change all my inputs and outputs to match whatever we have in our application so we can make the proper connections. Now let's go back to our application and I want to show you what we have. So basically we have our pump status input or pump start stop command as an output and a little piece of logic. And inside this logic we have a very basic program. So and it works like this. If my system is enabled and my pump is not locked or it's not in alarm, then start the pump. And you can see that my pump start is already connected to my pump uh, start stop output and my enable is connected to my system enable input. All we have left is the pump locked. And this is just a very basic example. You most likely are going to have a more complicated program. But the idea of this tutorial is just to show you how to connect your pump alarm to your logic. So we know that my pump start logic is already connected to my system enabled network input and my actual output. So what is left is my pump lock. So I'm just going to make that connection. I'm going to right click, make connections, and we get an error. No blocks with matching criteria found. So what does this mean? Okay, so this means that we don't have another point with the same units as my pump lock. And what we need to do is to go back to our original pump alarm logic and remember that all this is in boolean format, all the inputs and outputs, so we're just going to have to change uh, all of them to the respective uh, uh, enumerators uh, units. So let's go back to our logic and inputs and outputs. So I want to see what type of units we have. So for my pump status, I know that I have an off on and it's an enumerator. For my alarm reset, we have a off reset, also an enumerator. And let's see what else do we need. The pump start stop. We know that our pump start stop is stop start. So we go back to pump alarm and let's start creating those uh, inputs and outputs. So I'm just gonna go and type input. And I know I need an enumerator for my start stop. I need that enumerator for my pump status. And we also need an output for my pump alarm, so it will be also an enumerator. And, oh, actually, my alarm reset as well, an enumerator. There you go. And now I'm just going to uh, right click on that input, uh, rename it, or you can just press F2. And I'm going to put the same name as my, my other input. Same for the other ones. And by the way, guys, if you want to know what's the difference between in and boolean and floats, uh, make sure you watch my other tutorial on that. I'm going to leave a link on the description below. And I'm going to name this just pump lock. You know, you can give it any name you want. So going back to my pump start stop, I know this is an enumerator, so I'm just going to look for my stop start right there, apply. And I'm going to delete my boolean input, and I'm just going to try to make a connection from my enum to my boolean, but it's actually going to convert it automatically. You can see that uh, enum to boolean translation, stop equals false and starts equal true so we're good 
same thing with my pump status i'm gonna delete this input and i know that my pump status is an off on so by default enumerators are off on so it's already there so i'm just gonna make a straight connection for my alarm reset i know that i want a uh, an off reset right there apply close delete this boolean alarm reset and then i'm just gonna attempt to make the connection and yeah was a success so off means false reset means true good and then finally my pump alarm okay for this uh we're gonna go back to my pump start logic and just look at the units i forgot to do that okay it's unlock and lock that those are the units so going back to my pump alarm double click edit and just look for that we just type the, fir the first few words u and l on lock lock apply double click to close right here i'm gonna delete this guy and try to make the connection and there you go you got that double click so false means unlock true means lock or alarm did you have it and now you see that uh, all of our inputs are actually enumerators you see that they now show stop off on they, they don't show false or true anymore and they're being translated to boolean because my my logic is in boolean mode but the only thing in the logic is a timer and for my output uh we do have the uh lock unlock lock so it's also a boolean translation so now we can start making connections so let's go ahead and do that and I also have a tutorial on making connections. So if you are not familiar uh, on how to do that, you can always go and check that video. So I'm gonna go to my pump start, click on it. And now let's see, we have uh, a, another point with the same unit and we know that we do. So let's right click, make connection. The only available point with unlock lock is under my pump alarm, which is this guy. And it's the output a PMP LCK, okay. So we got that so we already have this part all connected now we go back to our, our pump alarm and you can see that the connection got made uh, for countdown we don't care about that um, that was just for the previous tutorial and actually let's do uh, let's do the uh, the pump let's do the pump status and it's right here it's an input pump status so it's this guy okay and my alarm reset right click the, that's the only option which is right here okay and what we have left is our pump start stop so let's try to do that right click make connection and it's right here so basically it's coming from, from here so i'm just gonna click on it and we got an error a circular dependency has been detected your connection has not been created okay this is a typical error so i want to show you how to fix that and why this is happening so i'm just going to click ok so it basically didn't allow me to make the connection even though they have uh, compatible units stop start okay so i have created this quick animation to better explain to you why this circular dependency error happens and what you can do to fix it so on my original application i already had my pump start logic connected to the system enable and to my pump start stop then in my pump alarm logic we converted our units from boolean to enum so we could make the following connections our pump alarm lockout to my lockout and my pump start then our pump status and alarm reset to my pump alarm logic block now our last step was to connect our start stop into our pump alarm block but that's where we got the circular dependency error and you can see right there there's a circular shaped connection that red loop and that means that each logic block depends on each other and cct cannot solve that so the easy way to fix it is to use a cct module called last value and we just need to put it on any side of the loop either between my alarm lockout connection or my pump start stop side in our case we're just going to put it in between the start stop connections now coming back to cct let's add this last value module you can add it on any of the three columns i like to do it on under miscellaneous so i'm just gonna click on the plus sign and i'm just gonna type last that's it and i know it's an enumerator because we are connecting start stop uh units so i'll do that and i'll make it uh, let's say start stop 
LB for last value and hit finish. Now notice that our last value was created here in a white box, not yellow as it shows here. So that means that a white box, you cannot really go inside the logic. There's no logic. You cannot put any logic inside, as in the case of my pump alarm where I, you can go inside the logic. And all we have to do in this block is just double clicking on it and go to edit. And all, all it has is an input and an output. So all we have to do is just uh, look for my units, which, which we know are stop start, stop start for my input and same thing for my output, stop start. Then apply and close. Now remember that my pump alarm is missing the start stop connection, which is coming from my pump start stop. So instead of connecting my pump start stop to my pump alarm, we're actually connecting the start stop to my last value and then from my last value output to the input of the pump alarm. So let's do that. I'm just going to click on my last value and for my input, I'm just going to right click make connection. So I want to connect my pump start stops, which is right here. Start stop. Okay. And then the output of my last value is going to be connected to the input of my pump alarm. And then start stop. And that closes the loop properly. And we don't get any circular dependency detection. So we're good. And finally, we can start our simulation and test it. So I want to go to real time speed, system enable disable, okay, start. Okay, good. And I just want to remind you how the pump start logic works. So basically after it gets a, an enable, a system enable, and there's no pump uh, lockout, it's going to start the pump. That's simple. So let's go back to control and let's command our system enable to enable and send and we get a pump start command right away. But remember that in our pump alarm, we have a 15 seconds delay uh, that is going to lock the pump if we don't get a status. So you will see it's going to lock it out and it's going to give it a stop command. So there you go, stop command. So let me show you what's happening. So our pump lock, it should show locked right now. We don't get a start command. So it's locked out. And the only way to restart the pump, it, it will be to reset my alarm reset. So let's go ahead and do that. Right click, command, reset. Okay, and send the command. And remember that we're gonna send the alarm reset back to off. So the pump started right away. And then we have 15 seconds before uh, it is gonna lock out. So I'm gonna give it a status, send. So we, we have a start command. We got a status within the 15 seconds, so it didn't lock out. So basically, uh, we are good right now. And this is it. This is the end of uh, my pump alarm tutorial, second part. And I hope this was a good addition to part one. And guys, if you haven't subscribed yet or liked this video, please do so. That really helps me out. And finally, I hope that you also learn about this last value module that helps you avoid getting that circular dependency connection error. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.